Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Meeting. Today we are 16th of August 2024. Around the table we got myself, Damien Duportal, Stéphane Merle, Bruno Verarten, and Kevin Martins. Hervé and Mark won't be able to join us today. Okay, let's get started with the weekly release. So the weekly release is out. Uh, the Docker image is currently being finished. Let's let's see directly on the screen. Yep, should be finished in one or two minutes. So that new version is out. Um, release process was okay. Uh, changelog has been merged. Thanks, Kevin. Um, usual packaging stuck on OSU OSL. I'm mentioning this because we might need to take action. However, tomorrow we'll have a LTS and we don't have any available action on the LTS because that is a script specifically for the core and testing that on an LTS deployment is bad. Um, need infra action, Damien, to open an issue to track this, but after the LTS, see below, uh, Docker image is being built. So as soon as the image is available, you can deploy to infra CI. Is there any question, point, remark, anything on the weekly release? Okay, um, another announcement. Tomorrow is LTS. So don't break anything, please. I don't have other announcement, folks. I think it is today or tomorrow, the Oracle patch day or something so we might see lots yep. of prs coming our way later on this week next week usually next it takes week. one okay. week for timurine to package everything but yeah good okay. point java patch day today expect pierre to upgrade gdk soon thanks good point um, so, do you have other announcements or should we shift to the upcoming calendar? Um, just a word, cloud billing. I'm late this week, so no cloud billing update this week. Damien's late. Uh, just one remark, the Azure bill is always $100 higher than what the cost explorer shows. That has been a bad surprise on last week because I said we were below the 4.3K uh, objective, but we're just a bit above due to this $100. Um, this is the cost of monthly standard support and given the support uh, condition for the developer plan at 30 bucks per month or the free support, we don't want this low level pricing support. So starting this month, now we know that the cost explorer, I, I must add this hundred dollar to see the final bill. Now we know it's not something unexpected that has been the cost for quite some time. I don't know why Mark and I were sure that it was Less than that, but yeah, that's the cost. And it's not on the cost explorer because that's a separate billing item. But the final bill always have this and what the CDF pays for us includes these hundred dollars. Any question? Nope, okay. Uh, upcoming calendar, we will have a new weekly release last week, late next week. April 2024. So while I got Bruno here, uh, is that okay? If we are able to finish the work, approve and merge the two expected pull requests, or at least the Linux one 
for yep. the base image changes, we might have uh, an item on the change log or not, because theoretically that shouldn't change. However, mm -hmm. because it's an internal implementation, however, that might have impact. So I'm still hesitating adding it on the change log. Uh, yep. the pull request title mentioned a chore, which is absolutely valid and legit. Ooh, I got it right this time. <laughs> Thank you. Kevin, the, yeah, we change the way in the Docker image on how we install GDK. The source is still Eclipse Temerine and the version are still the same. It's just that we use the official binary installer instead of using the binary installer provided by the official Temerine images. So I'm not sure it's worth uh, writing it in the change log, honestly, but worth having that in mind. If we see issues, we add it to the change log to let the end user know. Is that okay for everyone? Same with yep. me. If we are able to finish the pull request, of course, still a bit of, of work, but yeah. <laughs> thanks for that, Bruno. And uh, for information, Hervé did the same kind of work, but on the agents images, which is a different life cycle. So no no relationship with the weekly or LTS core releases. Um, tomorrow uh, will be the 7th in April, 2024. And we will have a new LTS 2.440.3. I don't remember who is the lead, but yeah, uh, I'm there uh, all day long. Hervé should be back to work unless he's not feeling better and he's ECD doctor. Uh, Stefan will be there intermittently in the morning and you won't be available that much or at all during the afternoon. So no worries. At least I'm there and eventually uh, Hervé is here. So same process and please don't break the infrastructure until tomorrow. Is there anything on the infrastructure? On the, sorry, uh, LTS release tomorrow? Okay, so let's have a look. On the Jenkins announced advisory, we don't. So nice, no security advisory. Uh, I don't know what the next major event is since CDCon and DevOx are currently being run. No one at the DevOx and we have Mark and Basil at the uh, CDCon in Seattle. So let's wait for next week uh, to see the next major events. Is there any question? One, two, three, okay. Uh, let's roll on the task that we were able to complete uh, during the current milestone. Um, first of all, startup and backup failure with Java, no class dev error. So yeah, we had a bad surprise. Um, we updated plugins unrelated to Datadog and still, after a restart of CI Jenkins IO, Datadog plugin started to complain about no class definition error and it corrupted DAO build uh, log. It's the second time since the beginning of the year. Uh, they provided a quick a fix really quick as soon as we were able to uh, to report the issue. Someone uh, was already already did it when we reacted. The weird part is that we didn't touch the Datadog plugin, because the problem was that the Datadog plugin was assuming a dependency was present through transitive dependencies. And one of the plugins we updated removed that de sub-dependency. So it wasn't able to resolve some, uh, some methods and some classes and some symbols. So they had to fix by declaring the Git client as a direct dependency. And that fixed the whole, the whole thing. So we were able to quickly update uh, all of our images on Infra CI, Release CI, and everywhere where we are using Datadog uh, to avoid the build log to be corrupted on other controller other than CI Jenkins IO. Uh, is there any question on this one? No, nothing there. We reported on the they're mentioned they are working on uh, safety nets to avoid build XML to be corrupted. I hope they will succeed though. 
Uh, we had an account request to be deleted with success and another account to be deleted with success. Uh, we had a bunch of issues closed as not planned, uh, mainly people not following properly developer or uh, uh, RPU instruction. So they open issues while they should read the documentation and follow the instruction. And uh, we have more and more persons that uh, uh, are mixing up LDesk, our LDesk system with a forum for help. Uh, so except closing as not planned, I don't see something else. Um, a rare issues that we had last week during the weekly release, though, someone tried to install the package during the two or three minutes window where the Debian repository is being processed and updated. That happened, but that the first time I see it on Jenkins, usually it's more AshiCorp, so I, I believe it depends on the process you are using. So that user well, uh, had an index telling the new package is there, but the package wasn't there with an explicit error saying uh, sync in progress. Right. The, the error is index file failed to download, they have been ignored and mirror sync in progress. That one is a typical when dealing with uh, Debian or Ubuntu packages. So of course, a few minutes after it was done and uh, mark confirmed, so no action from us. And there is no real solution here that has been known for 25 years. So yeah, no solution here, except retrying a few minutes later. And finally, the Jira test project request has been closed because yeah, reasons between the GitHub admin, the Jira administrators. Any question on these unrelated errors? of issues that we closed as not planned. No? Okay. Uh, work in progress. So we have first update center, uh, nothing done. Hervé is out and Stefan and, and Damien were busy. Is that, is there anything else on this one or? Is that okay for you, Stefan? No, that's right. Perfect. Uh, Stefan, a word on infra CI migration on RM64. Can you give us a summary of uh, what has been done uh, and what are the next steps? Um, infra CI is now running on RM64 uh, on a dedicated uh, node pool just for that controller. And um, I need to clean up. Uh, I think I will. I will do all the cleanup for uh, all the um, the controllers migrations. So infra CI uh, release CI and and check if there is some leftover from weekly CI. So dedicated. Uh, they get, uh, not only the node pool and also a specific subnet. And subnets. Isolation. Yes. Nice. Same and for for release. In fact. Before closing. So you said cleanup. So cleanup yes. of the A PV, PV, PVC PV. and and disk and snapshots that are that are from the, the old version. Okay. Yes, uh, Bruno. Uh, I may have a stupid question, but uh, I know all your infrastructure is as code. Um, so you may have something very specific for these controllers now that they run on ARM64. What if uh, we had some special uh, JVM, JVM configuration because it's ARM64 and we may have a few options that could give a better performance? Would it be possible or difficult to add that kind of option specific for ARM64 or do we have to stay agnostic, generic, you name it? Do you have an example? But I'm not sure, I'm not <laughs> no. sure to answer your question. No, but we, uh, we, if... could, we could do whatever we want. Yeah, exactly. We can. We have flags already defined to fine tune okay. Jenkins. So if we if need a flag, a... we add it. Yeah. Uh, there is, uh, I, I don't see a valid reason 
to do a generic switch that say, if it's Intel, then use this one. Otherwise, if it's ARM, it's this one. Because we only have one target, one production. So okay. we can add, we, if we had a specific flag for whatever reason, there might be. Uh, I don't know if it's needed or why. But if there because is I've any, been we told, can add it. Yeah, I've been told today that some people are reporting some performance issue with ARM64 uh, JDK. And there are a few options that we could add in order to get rid of these limitations. So that's why I was asking. OK, yeah, worth opening an issue describing. We need to describe properly. Is it performance issue in GVM in general? Or is it Jenkins? Or is it both? No, no, GV GVM in general, nobody complain about Jenkins. <laughs> OK, the, the question is, what are these um, slowness? And is it something, uh, is it code called by Jenkins or used by Jenkins? Because if it's not, there is no point yeah, of course. in adding this. Absolutely. The, the idea is that we add it if we need it. It's least of principal course. privilege applied. But yeah. thanks for the notice. Yep, yeah, we can okay. and we can tune uh, the flags, of course. Yeah. Okay. Reminder, it's, uh, we, we tailor the whole setup to the production. We don't make it a generic and reusable thing that will be so much effort that we don't care. And we use M chart or Puppet. So in any case, we have a template engine that provides the GVM, uh, GVM flex. Got it. Thank you. Does it answer your question? Absolutely. Um, so Stefan, you said the snapshot leftovers. Um, PDP point for... disk snapshot that, that we can that we can remove, of yeah. course, the unwanted and the the one that are coming from the source for the migration. Um resource manually created during operation. Yes. Um what else? You are the person that uh, opened the issues. Yes, but I opened another issue to uh, for the migration for the the storage class to a uh, uh, standard versus premium, but that's not in that uh, issue. So issue open about using a different storage kind. Yeah, pricing. because when we when we did the migration to ZRS um, okay, um, to be able to migrate from zone to zone, uh, we discovered that we can uh, use a less expensive one because uh, the the metrics we see yep. are under what we use. Absolutely. So we can save um, money. We have also um, there is an issue. I don't. I, I haven't checked if it was created or if it has to be written. Uh, that might be related to the storage kind. Uh, and remove the. Uh, PVC source. PVC's spec dot data source. It's in the same one. Perfect. So I've added a sub bullet. The news directive. And I, I wrote in the issue that we need to make sure to handle the permission at Bootstrap for the volume too, not to forget it. Yep. That will be on the second issue. Uh, each implementation detail for each. But that one was part of the cleanup. So if it's on the other issue, that's OK. Um, OK. And there is a last one that we realized uh, this morning. The Jenkins agent label Linux dash oh, yeah. RM64. This is one is not for is not, both there's no issue VM yet. and container. Yes, we have the same label for VM or container, which is bad. Which makes the execution of jobs undeterministic in behavior and execution time. Just execution time behavior. It don't know behavior because sometimes we have, we have issues. Uh, so these are the last steps. So we did the most of the heavy work, but we need to open these issues and perform the cleanup. Most probably not tomorrow. Uh, I believe Thursday should be okay for you to perform the cleanup, uh, Stefan. 
Yes, sorry, yes. The day after LTS. And the rest are issues, so we can do it whenever we want. Anything else? Any question on the topic in FRACI on RM64? So yeah, it's been. You can yep. duplicate for the next one. Uh, yeah, more or less. Uh, so we haven't, since Friday, we haven't seen any slowness or issue that looks like related to that change. So we are quite happy with this one. So good job, Stefan. Um, uh, I'm not the since one we were there, uh, we opened an issue. Same thing for release CI. So, okay, Stefan, uh, do you want to describe uh, what we were able to do for release CI as well? Uh, same, the controller is now running on his uh, own node pool on ARM64. Um, and, and did today's release quite well. So it worked. Um, we, we improved to the, the, some the annotation for the volume moon and end moon, but that's on the side. Um, mm -hmm. what else? That's all, I think. So oh, we didn't mention, uh... we didn't mention for infra that we, we bumped into the, the network, uh, um, problem between the agent and the and the um, controllers you had to add in in NGC, NGS network group uh, security. Yes, so that's uh, in the to do before closing, opening an issue or doing the network security groups uh, uh, to add because that's something we need to do. Oh, for release, yes, yes. Well, operation. So faster up, okay. Um, no agent will be run on RM64. That's really important for that controller. We don't want to build Jenkins on an RM64 machine. We are already fighting since two years to bump Maven version. And we will have GDK 11 to GDK 17 version because the risk here is providing a Jenkins war file with different bytecode than it used to be. And that kind of change is a breaking change. So that will be a 3.0 version if we were of Jenkins, if we were using Semver, which we don't. But in any case, such a change need to be announced really, really in advance and need to be carefully crafted in terms of communication because people using war explosion or mechanism relying on the bytecode GVM will clearly have their whole process broken if we change the CPU architecture or the version of the GVM we use. That's really a sensitive topic. That doesn't mean we shouldn't do it, but that's the reason why we don't want to, to change that thing. And the amount of time we use for building this even once a week is not worth the effort to switch to RM64 right now, clearly. There are many other topics where it, it's worth. I mean, we build for three hours per week. That's nothing. The difference won't be even foreseeable. And we don't have Windows RM64, of course. So since we need Windows for packaging. Yet. <laughs> you never know. Hope is a good thing to have. Sorry, sorry. We don't have Windows RM64 with an API and the ability for Jenkins to create ephemeral agent on that machine. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, a machine called LBI. Next step before closing. So, as Stefan mentioned, we realized that um, set up a subnet NSG to isolate release like infra CI is. So we don't have isolation at the subnet level with, through uh, NSG. So we need to reuse our module. It was never done, but the goal is to ensure that the agents on the release node pool can only connect to the release controller and vice versa. We, can, we can't have cross controller agent connections or unwanted connections. 
So I'm writing issue to add, so we should be okay to complete release CI migration. Then we have cleanup uh, of the whole PVC, PVC, etc. Uh, I think I will do the cleanup for both of them at the same time. Same because it's operation it's as infra CI and weekly CI cleanups. One shot. Nice, thanks, Stefan. Uh, and then we have the issue about different kind storage to decrease cost, same as in FRACI. Uh, and we don't have the issue to open on this one. No. Is there something else on the RM64 oh, subject? No, no, no. I, I did open the, the issue for the cost saving. Cool. Yes. Uh, let me just add this. I have one last topic for RM64. Um, costs on private gates cluster. Expect increased costs. Oh, I'm sorry, for folks. The, for the nodes for RM64 that can't handle the, the amount of... Uh, yes, okay, got it. Linux pool still runs some workload. So we now only are we now have three virtual machines instead of two. What we used. We used to have two virtual machines and everything was packed on this machine, the two controllers and a bunch of tiny services such as the ingress, for instance. Now we have created isolated virtual machines on RM64, not only for the RM64, but also controller isolation. But we still have services to run on the cluster and these services require to run on machines. Some of these services does not have an RM64 um, uh, binary, so we cannot run them on RM64 and that's okay. Uh, we have some that can run on RM64, such as the Datadog cluster agent, or for instance, the Nginx ingress. Uh, thing is, we decided to separate. We want to, uh, let's say, um, aggregate all these services all together so they can keep running on the same machine. That should be okay. We don't have high availability constraint here, so one machine should be enough. But in the end, we will have three machines instead of two. So of course it's an, ex an, uh, an increase in cost. Is that, does it make sense for everyone? We want to keep this cost increase because we want isolation between controllers and also other services. There could be different other solutions. We could move some of these services uh, directly to public, such as the bots, but yeah, I don't think it's a problem. It's just, I want to set the expectations here. The goal of IRM64 here uh, was, is to decrease systematically, uh, see, uh, in a systemic way, if we would have three Intel machine, we will pay more than one Intel and two RM64. The real reason why we use RM64 to support the effort of the, of the developers and the sponsorship of uh, other platform, we want to be the spear of the edge. So there is no prior reason for us running RM64 for controller, but at least we can say, hey, we've been running these two controllers with RM64. Look, it's stable enough. Stephen, are there other tasks on IRM64 uh, right now in progress? Except uh, these two with the cleanup part. I think so. Okay, so that means next IRM64 steps LDAP, key cloak, migration, and oh, the, the, the being... image for CI, the agent uh, Docker Builder. Oh, yeah. Containers. True. Uh, Docker, but 
is it RM64 or is it more all in one topic, all in one image? The goal is to get rid of Docker Builder in favor of the Packer images that occur. Is that, yes, is that... you're right. I'm, I'm, uh, you, you're right. I think it's more, it's more all in one than ARM64. To be used. I'm, I'm rating both to matter as what we just said. Regarding LDAP and Keyclock migration, uh, we will have statefuls. We will have persistent volume. So what we learn with the ZRS and the change of PVC things means we can prepare the operation for these two that will require uh, making the services offline during the persistent volume migrations, but that should be okay. Everything good? Yeah. Is there any question on the wall RM64 topic? I won't add the issues here on the next milestone. We will focus on the other. If we have time, we can add them. It's just a, a word about what will be the next step strategically uh, wide. Is that clear? Yes. OK, uh, next one. The Artifactory Repo Jenkins Systematic Audit, uh, nothing done. Uh, need to send an email to the developer's mailing list. I didn't have time to, to do this. Um, is there any question on this one? No actionable for us. Okay. Next step, the Docker Hub errors on HTTP 429. Uh, we now have spread the outbound request through we have three IPs instead of one instead of one uh, worked well with docker agent releases yesterday so I believe if I open trusted and we check it worked with the LTS image, worked with, uh, sorry, with the weekly core image today. So we are safe for the LTS tomorrow. And for now, we are not blocked uh, from performing releases and deployment of the new official Jenkins images, whether the controller or the agents, that's good news. Now, uh, the next step, Bruno, can you give us a little heads up on the plan? Because now it's more SIG platform. <laughs> yes, more or less. Um, the goal there is to have, um, how would I say that? So the so same images for the build part and for the run part, I would say, even if that's not really clear. Um, the thing is, we don't want to have as many layers as we have today. Today, to build um, an image for uh, Debian Alpine or whatever, we have to pull uh, first an image from the Docker Hub repository uh, belonging to um, Temerin and then extract the binaries from this image and then build uh, compressed version of that, a tailored version of uh, the JDK thanks to the JLink uh, command. And then we copy that into the target um, image, be it Debian, Alpine, uh, UB9, whatever. And so we decided that we would use the same image for the build and for the run part and only downloading the Tamarin JDK binaries and not the Docker image anymore. So that should make for a few la uh, fewer layers uh, to download where we use them, uh, our images. So I, I don't know if that will really help with those uh, 494, uh, 20. Yes, it will. Uh, errors, it will uh, so. the, the, the count we made with the Docker person is that we should uh, reduce by a third the amount of layers we are pulling. So the amount of requests we do during a release will be decreased of thirty three percent if we do that change. Yeah, it's it's each call for the API of of Git of uh, Docker inside. Exactly, pull yeah. push layers and everything. 
So that uh, of means course, so that makes sense. Yeah, of course. If you remove the Eclipse Tamarind for each platform we build, which each is, uh, let's say, five to 10 layers. Yeah. So you will remove, let's say, five layers. So five layers, uh, minus five layers for uh, Linux Intel, minus five layers, so 10 layers less uh, for ARM, S390X5, PPC5, Windows, we have four or five platforms, so at least 20 layers less. So we are almost 120 layers less, so less requests sent to the Docker Hub for each build already. Okay, that's pretty cool because most of our images are built on top of um, Ubuntu Jammy based Tamarind images, so that's already quite a few layers. Yes, but I'm not even mentioning the Linux platform because we have Alpine and yep. we have the others. So yeah, that's a lot of layers that we should stop the request from the Docker Hub. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that okay if we keep the issue open? But now I will remove it from the milestone because we don't have an issue tracker for SIG platform or the whole Jenkins yep. project, mm -hmm. unless you want a Jira issue, but the idea is let's use, reuse that issue. No. And we point Jira. all the pull requests on all images on this one and we will close it, but it won't be on the next milestone because there is no Jenkins infractionable for us to work on. Of course. No, yep, it's only the Docker images maintainer. That's why I said it's SIG platform area. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean we won't track it, but I just say the Jenkins infra team won't have to work on this uh, as at least as a series. Is that okay? Fine with me. Thank you. Thanks. Um, uh, the move the Jenkins stat repository, nothing done yet. Need to resume, but yeah, we were only two and we had work for free. So of course we were busy. We need to do it before Jean-Marc Messon goes to retirement. <laughs> And even a bit before, as a reminder. Yes, please. <laughs> Mergrin um, migrates plugin site API generate data from CI SEM uh, late on these low priority tasks. Uh, relating the mirrors, uh, new mirrors. So I never remember uh, one has been pinged missing HTTPS, but maintainer was in holidays. So uh, thanks Hervé for uh, pinging and uh, uh, keeping contact with the maintainer. They propose to add a new mirror, but they don't provide HTTPS and Jenkins doesn't allow download for HTTP. So they need to set up certificate domain stuff uh, before we're able to use them. And other mirror uh, need to check FTP credentials locally. So uh, Hervé was in charge of that, but since he's uh, off due to illness, we have to wait for him to be back. If he's not back tomorrow, because if he has something a bit more serious or requiring more rest, in that case, I will take over that second one, unless someone objects. But right now, I believe Hervé will be back tomorrow in two days, so let's see. Is there any question? One, two, three, no, okay. Uh, last one. Um, so we have work in progress on the new AWS account to consume the 60K credits we have. We, so I have, so last week we validated the, let's say the permission model. So I started to build a local Terraform repository that I will most probably put on the Terraform state private repository. The goal is to have a code to bootstrap the whole repository. Uh, and I'm working right now on the setup, the IAM setup of allowing users to impersonate a role. Same thing, same model as what CloudBees uh, told us. So thanks, CloudBees Ops, to uh, to point us and give us and share some code with us. The idea is that we should always use impersonate action. I think it's AWS STS something. It assumes role action. So when you authenticate on AWS as an administrator, you won't have access to anything. 
and you must assume a role name infra admin or infra developer or just infra reader. So you will get subset of permissions restricted per region and the API token will only last one hour. The goal is to avoid any kind of API uh, being stolen uh, on our machines because we are the target of such attacks. And less work for us. Uh, Terraform for IAM model. Next step. So the next step will be perform effective bootstrap in pair. Uh, the idea is that I should not be the person doing the, the bootstrap itself. And then start working on a new CI gates cluster for ci.jenkins.io. Any question? No. Okay, now the new issues. Someone here has been responsible for issues. Stefan, let's encrypt Azure service principle. <laughs> you volunteered for this one, so I let yeah. you explain. Yeah, I just, I, it should be, uh, that should be kind of easy because I just need to follow the directive that I put myself in the update CLI manifest and that builds the pull request. So um, this, those two pull requests should create a new password that new password uh, will allow us to create a new um, dot, a new Azure Service Principle password, sorry. And that new Service Principle password will allow um, the DNS challenge for the Let's Encrypt. So, so uh, recreating a new DNS, uh, let's, uh, new Let's Encrypt certificate. So I will have to follow the steps. I think it's, it's easy. Yep. That's quite clear. Is there any question or clar need for clarification for this one? Okay. Um, so we had this, this one and migrate storage from Premium so to see, Stonework. See, I did open the issue and I put some, some yep. metrics, but that's not, that's not uh, sorted and, and with no explanation for now. Okay. Um, I may ask, okay, the occasion, yeah. That's a work in progress. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm adding it to the milestone. Or do you think it will be doable for this week or do you think we have to delay? No, I think it could be done, no? I don't know done. How, 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 I... The, the, the amount of, of work that this little thing imply. I can uh, try. It's... You, you, the, the idea is that uh, it has to be prepared because that will require putting down infra CI and release CI again and we while we create the new disk and then the new PV and then the new PVC, migrate and copy the data and then restart the controller. So for release okay. CI, we have to wait Thursday and for infra CI, it has to be announced because that will uh, block the website's uh, preview on the pull request. Yes. Okay, uh, I'm removing try edge and I've added it to the milestone. In any case, we have to prepare the detailed plan for this one. The issue describe what we need. Decrease cost. I, I thought we will just create, I, I'm sorry, I didn't. I probably kept in my mind the wrong version of what we have to do, but that's fine. The, the thing is, if we create a volume, it has to be managed somewhere. Either by yeah, the creation will be from Terraform, but uh, I, yes. I I so, I mixed both of them, so I forgot that we need to air sync all the all the data. But that's mm -hmm. fine because that will be an empty volume, and yeah. you cannot tell Terraform to um, uh, fill the content of the volume from a snapshot. That is not possible. Uh, you you have the so key. We need we need to have the process to create the volume from from Terraform, and then we have to 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 run a pod, mount to volumes and migrate the data. Got exactly. it. Exactly. We will need a manual pod. We can add the definition on a YAML and that pod will mount on read only the current volume. It can be a, a, a mount on multiple pods. So that pod will start on the same node as infra CI, for instance, that will have read only access to the Jenkins zone. 
We can even stop infra CI to ensure that we don't have concurrent read and writes. So we stop infra CI. We have that maintenance pod that is created that mount in read only the source volume and the new empty volume, copy the data, eventually set the permissions, and then stops and is deleted. Once okay. it's done, we have to delete the PV PVC stateful set on infra CI and recreate it by with a manual operation. Well, yeah. We, not not with data source this time and specifying the the, the, PVC. the new dedicated PVC. Exactly. Correct. It's that, not that, that hard. Take... It's just it has to be no, clear. No, but that on would the take some the... time to prepare and to make sure that um, mm -hmm. all the steps are okay. Okay, that's nice. And that one, of course, I can help and is blocking the LDAP and key clock because that's the one we will do for LDAP <laughs> instead of the snapshot. So I propose we assign both of us on this one. Yeah. Is there any question on this one? Okay, let me update the notes. Uh, okay, and I think that's all. Um, no, release.ci, uh, job DSL. Damien <laughs> to open an issue. I'm still uh, fighting yeah. with the I'm still fighting with the the pipeline that check the agents too for, for no, the Windows one. The pipeline is is okay. No, yeah. That's different topic. The, the pipeline is 99.9 .9 okay and it has yeah. no impact with the issue I need to write. The issue I need to write is because we need to update the way we configure jobs on release CI because it used job DSL with a raw content. And trust me, my friends, job DSL as it is hard to test. You can break everything. So that requires taking snapshot, backuping the instance, testing on a local copy uh, before pushing the, putting, uh, adding changes. However, with infra CI, we have an Elm chart that allow us to avoid writing the job DSL. We have a template engine doing that for us. So we just list the jobs we want and then it generate the job DSL for us. Avoiding human error, copy and paste errors, indentation error, uh, bracket error, groovy errors, job DSL syntax error. Uh, and every time we change a deprecated directive in job DSL to a new one, then we can apply it to every of our controllers in the future. So the goal here will be to have release CI using the Elm chart for generating job DSL to remove a bunch of deprecated uh, elements. Uh, we should remove as part of this, the status check, because if you look at GitHub Jenkins Infra release, oh, you know that red cross here, that means uh, the package job on release CI fails. It's because release CI sent a status check to GitHub. We don't want this here. That's a private controller. There is no reason for giving even the slightest uh, clue on what is happening here. It's not security issue, it's just isolation. So we need to be able to change job DSL in order to apply this change. And finally, the third one is a job that Stefan created for uh, this morning release CI migration to RM. We need a job that perform a set of agent ills check. So Stefan added a Jenkins file on the release that she reused the real life pod templates. So now we need to fix in job DSL as code the definition of that pipeline. So just, that's just a few lines, but we have to do them as part of the job DSL effort. Did I forget something? No, I think it's okay. I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else folks? Okay, so let's roll. We'll update the milestone and let's continue our effort. As a reminder, top priority should be now uh, the AWS uh, usage for CI gates and update center when Hervé will be back. I'm stopping screen sharing. One last chance to say something before I stop the, the recording. A good One, week. Two, three, okay. okay, so see you next week.